This is After the Roar, presented by Beneva on the Ticats Audio Network. This series catches up on various Tiger Cats alumni. It's a chance for them to look back on their time in Hamilton and tell us what happens after football. It's in your blood. Like, I grew up with it. So you can't just eliminate it from from your system. And even though I've gone on to do other things now, the CFL and specifically the Ticats are, are really what shaped me. My name is Mike Morielli. Former slot back, number 18 of the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I was very blessed to play eight of my 12 years in Hamilton. For the first time in uh, 1997, 98, 99, 2000, 2001. So a five year run to start and back again in 2004, five and six. So uh, collectively eight years in total. Being a Hamilton kid and, and sitting in the stands, I mean, I, I remember vividly as a five-year-old kid back in Iverwind, watching Grover Covington and Rocky Di Pietro and Ben Zambiazzi, and uh, I was I was just mesmerized. And you know, I grew up in a in a football family. Like my my family, my extended family, all love football, all love sports. So the Tie Cats were a way of life. So as I sat in those stands, I was like, man, just one day I wish I could be out there. And it just, it was a dream that it captivated me. And I loved it and I loved everything that Hamilton stood for. Like it was a tough place to play, it was a tough city. Um, and, and I wanted to mimic that in my game, even from the receiver position. When I look specifically at certain plays, there's a couple plays that I think I'm most proud of. And, you know, there's a big catch. It was actually my thousand yard catch in 1998. Uh, we needed a second, convert a second and 22 in Saskatchewan to wrap up first place. And Danny threw a nice ball, nice and high over the middle, which is exactly where I like it. And I kind of on the way down, got blown up a bit, hung on to the ball. So that was a real cool kind of moment for me. And then of course, that same year earlier on, a uh, big catch and, and toss to Bobby Olive, who who took it another 40 or 50 yards in for the touchdown against the Argos. So those two plays and, you know, and believe it or not, I actually had a 92 yard touchdown. Uh, one of the longest ones in, in history and uh, probably not known for my speed, but that day I, uh, it kicked in a little bit. Well, I was really very fortunate when I retired. Uh, I call it forced retirement. And you know, Rob, uh, on that day in 2007, I'll never forget it, but I kind of had a soft landing. Um, it, within a month, I became the VP of marketing for the Players Association. And it, it was part of something I've been working on as an executive member with the PA. And then, you know, that graduated to becoming the president of the Players Association. And at the same time, becoming a broadcaster and broadcasting OUA games at Vanier Cups and, and, and university football in this country and then you know when I stopped being president in 2014 and it's kind of you have to reinvent yourself and it's it's hard when you're 36 or 37 um, and you're entering the workforce and you're trying to find a job and you're competing as 20 year olds you know sometimes having a long career can work against you but you know that's just part of the you know the growth this is part of the development of, of life after football so i took a couple jobs you know from 2014 to 2017 that were eh, you know when i look back but it was one of those things it's that next step and that next step prepared me for where i am now my new role is with the uh, cbl canadian elite basketball league as commissioner and ceo and and it, it truly is the greatest job in the world and the greatest experience and opportunity i could ever ask for it's exciting. Uh, basketball is the future. Basketball is the current. It's the trajectory of the game and the sport is uh, ever increasing year over year. Uh, basketball lends itself to music and art and culture and lifestyle. So it's ingrained in, in, in that. And, and that's, that's cool to be a part of because basketball reaches not only domestically, it reaches globally very easily. It's a global game. And, um, you know, everything that's cool about basketball is what excites me. Everything that's new and exciting and it caters to a different fan base, a more diverse fan base, a more inclusive fan base. And, and all those things combined in, in the timing of what the Raptors have done and, and championships and the growth of the game across this country, it just, sometimes things happen for a reason. But and I'm glad they did. And I'm, I'm really, you know, excited about our future. I'm excited about what we've done to date. Our league is is definitely growing. Um, we're very fortunate to be the largest pro league in the country. We're going to add more teams as the years go on. Um, you know, I want to be a top five FIBA league in the world. That's what I want to do. Uh, and I won't stop until we get there. And I know we're on that pathway. And and I, I, I really take to heart, you know, everything I learned. Uh, all the opportunities I had 
to be in front of media, to be in front of fans, to have teammates, to just experience um, what I experience. And, and sometimes it's a bit surreal, I have to be honest. You know, I, I sometimes pinch myself. I, I got it pretty good. And I worked hard, don't get me wrong. And there was, like I said, there was a couple of gigs I had. I was like, eh, what am I doing? But it all led to where I am now. So the future's bright. Hopefully it's, it continues and, um, and we can just be, you know, another bright, shining sports entity in this country. This has been After the Roar, presented by Beneva on the Ticats Audio Network.